Legendary British author Charles Dickens's debut novel, The Pickwick Papers, first published as a serial of stories between 1836 and 1837, chronicles the adventures of the members of the Pickwick Club, a group of travelers who journey around England and share their experiences. Because of the original serial format of the novel, the chapters contain individual but interconnected episodes charting the club's exploits. The Pickwick Club has four members, founder Mr. Pickwick, a friendly retired businessman and philosopher, Tracy Tupman, a self-confessed womanizer who never seems to have any luck with women, Augustus Snodgrass, a poet unable to write poetry, and Nathaniel Winkle, a clumsy and inept athlete. It is May 1827, and the club's first adventure takes them to Rochester. On the way there, however, an irate cab driver thinks they are spies and lashes out at them in a grand tirade. A man named Alfred Jingle helps them out of the predicament and joins them on their journey. Jingle is a wily fellow and gets naive Winkle involved in a duel with a volatile military man known as Dr. Slammer. Their next adventure finds the club in Chatham, where they encounter Mr. Wardle, a country squire. After accepting an invitation to Wardle's farm, the group plays cards and cricket, tells stories, and hunts. Tupman develops an affection for Wardle's unmarried sister, Rachel, while Snodgrass falls for Wardle's daughter, Emily. But Jingle again upsets the situation by running off to elope with Rachel. Pickwick and Wardle follow the couple to London and bribe Jingle to stay away from Rachel, thereby preventing the marriage. Now back at home, Pickwick hires a cockney valet Sam Weller. Later, when Pickwick tries to explain to his widowed landlady, Mrs. Bardell, about hiring a valet, he does not describe the situation clearly, and Mrs. Bardell misunderstands, thinking that Pickwick is proposing marriage. She passes out in his arms as Tupman, Snodgrass, and Winkle walk into the room. At this point, Tony Weller, Sam's father, begins waxing on the pitfalls of marriage, a theme that he continues throughout the novel. Tony's own wife had left him and destroyed his life. His aversion to matrimony is seemingly justified when Mrs. Bardell files a breach of contract lawsuit against Pickwick for not following through on marriage. The club travels to Eatonswill, where Pickwick and Winkle stay with a local newspaper editor, Mr. Pot. They go to an absurd costume party hosted by a famous writer, and their Pickwick sees Jingle. Pickwick follows Jingle all the way to another town and learns that Jingle is planning another elopement, this time with a young lady from a nearby boarding school. However, this information turns out to be incorrect, and Pickwick falls ill with rheumatism. Recovering, he accompanies the club on a hunting trip to Barry Street, Edmonds. That is where he learns of Mrs. Bardell's lawsuit against him. Pickwick returns to London to defend himself. However, again, the unexpected descends on the group. Pickwick finds out that Jingle fled to Ipswich, so he, too, travels there in hopes of exposing Jingle. Confusion ensues at the local inn, and Pickwick is dragged to a courtroom presided over by the tyrannical Mr. Nupkins, who, as luck would have it, is a friend of Jingle's and whose daughter has sparked Jingle's interest. Pickwick exposes Jingle as a philanderer, and the judge sets Pickwick free. The club celebrates Christmas at the Wardle farm. Snodgrass continues to woo Emily, much to Wardle's consternation, as Winkle woos Arabella Allen, a friend of Wardle's daughters. Bardell's lawsuit goes to court on Valentine's Day, 1831. The judge finds Pickwick guilty, but Pickwick refuses to pay damages. He has two months to pay up, so, in the meantime, the club heads to Bath. Another mix-up occurs, and Winkle ends up in Bristol, where Arabella is staying with her brother, who does not approve of Winkle. Pickwick and Weller go to Bristol to help Winkle track down Arabella so he can confess his feelings for her. Once back in London, Pickwick is put in debtor's prison for refusing to pay court order damages to Mrs. Bardell. In prison, Pickwick discovers that a fellow inmate is none other than Jingle. Pickwick actually feels sorry for Jingle and helps him. Eventually, Mrs. Bardell is sent to the debtor's prison because she can't pay her lawyers. Pickwick forgives her. After Winkle marries Arabella, he asks Pickwick to help him smooth things over with their respective families. Pickwick agrees and pays his debts, as well as Mrs. Bardell's and Jingle's. In Bristol, Pickwick breaks the news to Arabella's brother, Ben, about her marriage to Winkle. Buoyed by a generous helping of spirits, he begins to accept the idea. Then Pickwick travels to Birmingham to tell Winkle's father of the marriage, but Winkle's father does not respond well. At home in London, 
Pickwick pays for Jingle to start a new life in the West Indies. Snodgrass and Emily plan their elopement, but Pickwick would rather see them married in the warm and supportive atmosphere of his new home. So, he intervenes, selling Wardle on the idea of Snodgrass as a son-in-law, and they hold a family wedding at Pickwick's house. With Pickwick's help, Sam the valet also finds love and marriage with a maid named Mary. In the end, the Pickwick Club ceases operation, but Pickwick can continue his adventures with all the new godchildren he will have in his life. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.